Hi, good day everybody. Just testing on my mic to make sure everything is working properly. Okay, we only have two persons, so I'm going to wait a bit. Let's see what happens in five minutes. All right, hi, good day to everybody. I hope that everybody is fine and safe and following the guidelines set by your Ministry of Health and other health agencies around the region. We are living in some challenging times and it requires us to make quite a few sacrifices in order to keep things going and to also look out for each other. Can you just give me a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me clearly? So just let me know if you can hear me clearly in the chat um, before I go any further. Okay, I only see one person, only one person has responded. Okay, I was second loud and clear, that's good. Okay, great.
All right, so today we have a few things that we want to cover. And I'm here on the Kawasa online page, the, the forum or platform, where we have most of the content that we are going, we are using to study or to prepare for the examination, the certification examination. There are about 10 objectives that this um, session, uh, well, the week that will so be covered for the week. Today, I'm going to attempt to cover a few of them. I am going to, however, spend most of the time, well, all of the time on disinfection, a very important topic for the certification. I am going to start going through content today and we are going to continue going through some of this content in the next class, which is also a disinfection class. But the next class, which we would spend a bit more time on calculation, sampling, monitoring, and analysis. Okay, so today we want to focus on disinfection. I am not going to go through everything in detail. As I usually say, the session that we have today, the, the, I have put it at 90 minutes, but that's still not enough time to go through all of that content. However, all of the content you need to know is available on the site. And I will be adding this power, the PowerPoint that I will use in today's class, I will be adding it to our session as well. I hope that you can see my screen. Can somebody confirm that you can see my screen, please? So I'm going to open our presentation. I'm doing this a bit of a strange way. I can't really see the, the chat that was available. Okay, so you can see my screen clearly. Shannon, the sound not being clear may have to do with your speaker setup or your internet speed. So let's proceed. Okay. So as I said, today we will focus on disinfection. And I've already, we're going to be looking at some of the requirements for disinfection. We're going to be looking at some of the objectives that were posted in the online platform. So, a few of the slides are going to take this format, a question and answer format, not that you will have to answer, but just throw out a question for contemplation. Why do we need to disinfect? Okay. When we speak about disinfection, this is one of the first things that should come to mind. Why, why do we need to do this? Uh, and um, water, the water that we collect, the raw water, especially surface water, and most times surface water has something we call pathogens. And pathogens are basically disease-causing organisms. And we have different types, and they cause some of the diseases posted here, cholera, which most of you may have heard of, cryptosporidiosis, gastroenteritis, dysentery, and jadeasis. All of these are examples of diseases that are caused by pathogens. COVID-19 is a disease caused by the coronavirus. And the coronavirus is a pathogen as well. It's also, well, it's a virus. Some of you are saying you can't see the entire screen. Hmm. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not sure. Let me see, what will I do about that? So I will stop the share and then I will start the share over again. Let's see if that solves that problem. Can you see it now? Let me know, please. You can use the mic to let me know as well. Can you see everything? Yes, we can see now. Okay, wonderful. All right, so, so we're looking at why we need this infection. We're saying that water has pathogens in it and pathogens are organisms that cause diseases. And if you looked at the video, most of many of these diseases, these diseases have similar symptoms, diarrhea, nausea, and so on. Some of them may cause fevers, Okay, as these pathogens release toxins in our bodies and in our liver and kidney struggle to try to get rid of them. The toxins have an effect on our various um, bodily systems. So this is why we need disinfection. Basically, in disinfecting, we are trying to meet one of the requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act. And that is to ensure that the water is safe for drinking. So we're protecting the health of our consumers. Now, pathogens are very small. Most of them we cannot see with the naked eye. We need some kind of aid to be able to see them. And we measure them in units we call microns or micrometers. But sometimes we don't use the word micrometer because the word term micrometer is also used for a piece of equipment that is available in a biology lab. So they tend to say microns to avoid the ambiguity. Okay, to make it clear and make sure that everybody understands, we usually use microns, but it also refers to micrometers. And we get a micron, if we were to take one meter and cut it into a million pieces. Each of these pieces will measure one micron. Okay, that's how small a micron is. That's something we cannot even imagine cutting up a meter. A meter is what, about 3.3 feet. We can't even imagine cutting up a meter so small. But that's how small a micron is. Now, if you looked at the platform, the platform looked at several of the different types of pathogens or microorganisms, and it gave an idea of the range. There's a table, I can see it right now, there's a table on the site that gives a range of, in terms of the size in microns of the various pathogens. Now, because pathogens are so small, it's easy for them to spread, okay? It's easy for them to spread from one person to another or from one place to another place. And these are three ways that they spread. Um, how we, we end up coming in contact with them in terms of pathogen, pathogenic um, organisms. Um, from person to person, so somebody sneezes in case of coronavirus, somebody sneezes or coughs, and you have these droplets in the air, that causes the spread. Um, person to person contact as well, you shake somebody's hand, um, somebody who maybe they coughed in their hand, you shake their hand, and um, you didn't sanitize or wash your hand, and you end up touching your nose, your mouth, your eyes, and then you get infected. Ingestion, as I mentioned, mouth. Ingestion means we basically, when we say by ingestion, we mean we either drink it or we take it in um, with our food. Things like E. coli, salmonella. These are some pathogens that invariably people ingest. Either they go to eat somewhere and it wasn't really um, cleaned or food that was not properly cooked. And um, these diseases get passed on. And an important um, bacteria, set of bacteria that we look at when we talk about water treatment and, and disinfection is a, a, a set that we call coliform bacteria. They're usually found in the fecal matter of mammals and other organisms. And um, we usually use them as an indicator um, as to whether we have an issue with our distribution system. So we do what we call 
a total coliform test. Um, and if we get a positive, it suggests to us that we may have an issue with our residual or some other issue in our distribution system. Also, physical contact with animals and their fecal matter. Um, so we can use Corona again. It is suggested that um, the passing from Corona to us is possibly from, is it bats, I think? Because it's bats actually carry a lot of pathogens on them and they are not affected by it because of the type of immune system that they have. Um, but they can spread it to other organisms like human beings and they have some, they have some really nasty um, pathogens. And then we have things like Ebola. Ebola actually came from what crossed over from a monkey in Africa. That's what they, well, that is what is apparent because it was a sickness that the monkeys usually have it, but it does not affect them in the way that it affects us. And it got, it crossed over um, to human beings and then we had a serious issue with that. Okay, um, keep, uh, keep looking to see if anybody has any question in the chat and so on. So there are some images that give us an idea of what some of these pathogens may look like. We have bacteria, we have viruses, and viruses, I, I find them to be the more interesting microorganism because they have all of these unusual shapes and some of the ships are very geometric some of them look like robots and spaceships and so on okay um, then we have protozoa protozoa they are generally a bit, a bit larger than viruses bacteria and so on they generally a bit larger um, i remember in my biology class i remember looking at some protozoa under the microscopes microscope under the low magnification, you can see them moving. You would take some, a sample from a pool of dirty water, maybe by the road or pond or so on, and you can actually see the protozoa moving in the water on the slide. Helminths are uh, basically, you can refer to them as worms. Um, these are parasitic worms that people usually end up ingesting the eggs and so on, and they develop in your digestive system and then you would pass out the eggs after a while. So the, the animals like cows, sheep, goat, dogs, they are quite a bit of mostly mammals though, um, they end up ingesting the eggs. The quote unquote worms become adults inside of the digestive system and they lay eggs and it passes out through the feces of these organisms. Fungus is also another one, but fungus is not as big of an issue um, in the distribution system as um, some of these other ones. Okay, so these are some of the bacteria, well, some of the microorganisms that we tend to pay attention to. Now, there are two special ones I want to mention there. Um, if you went through the content, these were discussed, but I want to point out that they are resistant to chlorination. That's Cryptosporidium and Giada. Okay, the two of them are resistant to chlorination. And the reason they are resistant to chlorination is because most of the time they're in the water, they're in the water as either cis, either cis or either oocyst or cyst, right? So most of the time, they're available in this form, okay? And this form actually has a harder layer around it that protects the inner layer. So it's almost like the sh it's not as hard as a shell of um, maybe a snail, but they have some kind of shell around them that protects them from harsh environments. So that's how they're able to make it through your stomach because there's acid in your stomach and the acid would not kill these things. These things would pass through your stomach and end up in your intestines. 
and that's to where they would make their home, they would develop, go through their life cycle, and then you would pass them out. Well, for this one, this is Jadia, you'd pass it out in this format. So if you look, the CDC, this is a, a document from the CDC, and it shows the infected stage is here. So this might be on fruits or food, this might be in water, and then you drink it, it goes into your mouth, goes through its life cycle, lays eggs, and then we have this coming out again. Okay? And this put, goes to that form, waiting to be ingested, and then the cycle continues. Okay? So because of this, this is this stage, the cyst or oocyst, they are very resistant to chlorination. So if we find them in our distribution system or in our treatment plant, then we have to take some rigorous methods, uh, maybe increase concentration of chlorine that we're using, but we have to take some rigorous measures to get them out. Filtration is a possible way of getting them out as well um, with special fil specialized filters. So what is disinfection? After saying all this thing, what is disinfection? Now, some of you do not work at the treatment plant and you may not be familiar with what happens at the treatment plant, okay? But at the treatment plant, we carry out what we call treatment. And there are several processes that um, take place on the treatment. Among them, coagulation, filtration. These are two of the processes. Disinfection is another process that takes place at the treatment plant. Now, having said that, the treatment plant is not the only place that we will carry out disinfection, and we are going to go through this in a while. But what is disinfection? Disinfection is the removing or destroying or deactivating of pathogens in drinking water. So we're either removing them by filtration, or we're destroying or deactivating them. Now, with certain types of pathogens like bacteria, we can bring down the concentration to a very, very low concentration where it's, it almost does, well, it doesn't show up, it may not show up in most of our tests, but if disinfection is not maintained through a residual, this bacteria can multiply, and then we can have a problem with bacteria again. And that's one of the reasons why I want to maintain this infection. We're going to go through this in a while. Okay, also, I wanted to mention sterilization because some people think that disinfection and sterilization are the same thing. Okay? They are not the same thing. Sterilization is a form of disinfection, but not all disinfection not all forms of disinfection sterilize. When we sterilize, we are basically killing all microorganisms. So when there's a storm and after the storm or hurricane, you are told to boil your water. Boiling your water for a certain period of time will sterilize the water. In other words, it's going to kill every single microorganism in that water. As, as we go through, you will realize that boiling is not something that we do in a treatment plant for obvious reasons. It is cost prohibitive to heat and boil all of these millions of gallons of water that we're dealing with in a treatment plant. So we don't do that because there are other ways of effectively disinfecting the water. Any questions so far? Okay, no questions so far. If you have a question, feel free to ask. You could use the little raise your hand icon. Okay, it's under the participants. On some devices. Okay, but you can use that if you have a question and I will respond. <coughs> Okay, so let's look at some of the factors affecting 
disinfection. We have about five of them. Okay, the first one is the types of organisms. And when you think back of things like cryptosporidium and giardia, um, these are, especially in the cyst or the oocyst form, they are more hardy and they tend to resist disinfectants a bit more, especially chlorination. Okay. So the type of organism is important. It will determine it, it will determine how effective our disinfectant will be. The age of the organism is also important, as most of these organisms have various life cycles. Um, in terms of giardia again and cryptosporidium, at one point in the life cycle, they are very resistant to disinfection. Now I am going to stop the meeting and I'm going to restart it because I'm getting a message that this is going to end. So I will stop and restart and um, all you have to do is just rejoin. Understood? So I'm stopping now.